makes a good dental assistant? There are so many people who would make good dental assistants that we do not have time in this video to give you all the answers. Let's just say that young or old, male or female, and just about anyone else you can think of would very likely make a good dental assistant if they like to work with their head and their hands. Dental assisting presents the opportunity to exercise mental and physical agility as well as to develop interpersonal skills while providing a valuable service. Dental assisting is all that and more. It's a fast-paced profession you can get into with as little as one year of academic, practical, and clinical training in an accredited program. When you're finished, you've just begun to assess the variety of career options open to the professional dental assistant. What does a dental assistant do? We've all been to the dentist's office, but do we know what a dental assistant does? There are two main areas of activity for the professional dental assistant. They are the clinical and business side of the dental practice. Let's talk about clinical first. Every state has different rules and regulations regarding dentistry and what tasks a dental assistant can perform. Clinical dental assisting includes duties with a variety of responsibilities. Dental assistants support the dentist in many capacities depending on their training, education, and the regulations in the state where they practice. They may pull the patient's dental records, escort them to the treatment area, prepare the instrument tray, and reassure the patient before treatment. As the dentist works, it is the assistant's job to anticipate the dentist's and patient's needs. The assistant also prepares dental materials for restorations. Again, depending on training and regulations, the assistant may conduct procedures in the patient's mouth, expose dental x-rays, take medical and dental histories, and give the patient follow-up information on caring for themselves after treatment. Assistants are most often in charge of sterilization procedures for the equipment used in the dental office. Some states allow dental assistants to polish teeth, provide fluoride treatments, make temporary crowns and bridges, and place dental dams, among other services. A dental office may be a solo or group practice. Dental assistants do not just work in dental offices. For instance, some work in hospitals, public health clinics, and specialty practice offices, such as orthodontics, prosthodontics, endodontics, periodontics, pediatric dental offices, and oral and maxillofacial surgical practices. And what about dental assisting on the business side of the practice? There are many opportunities there, too. The office manager will deal with patients, calling to make appointments, will handle insurance claims and patient accounts, order supplies for the practice, and handle personnel matters to name just a few duties. Some business assistants may function as the practice manager concerned with all aspects of the dental practice, both business and clinical. Other employment opportunities for the business-oriented assistant include the dental insurance industry and the sale and service of dental-related products. As a dental assistant, what's in it for me? Throughout the world, healthcare professionals are respected and much appreciated for their contributions to the quality of life. As a dental assistant, you will enjoy the prestige of a healthcare professional with a lot of practical benefits too. There's flexibility when choosing work hours and location in a full or part-time setting. Moving from state to state rarely causes a problem you'll find your services are always in demand in this vital and challenging field. Salary will depend on locale, experience, and responsibilities. Recent surveys show the national average salary for dental assistants was $15.62 per hour plus benefits. The real benefit of a dental assisting career is the fact that you'll be part of the American healthcare scene, a professional with a solid career identity flexible employment opportunity, and the potential for personal and professional growth. How do I get started in dental assisting? Whether you're a high school student, a working adult, 
a midlife career changer, or someone looking to return to the workforce, your local community college, technical school, or nearby university is a good place to find the answers. In many of these schools, full and part-time dental assisting programs are available, and many have financial assistance, scholarships, or student loans to help you. If you choose a full-time program, you can earn your diploma or certificate in less than one year. So who would make a good dental assistant? Maybe it's you. You like to work with your head and your hands. You enjoy interacting with people and playing a vital role in providing quality dental care, whether in the clinical or business setting. You seek flexibility and enjoy being in demand. You're eager to get on with your life and appreciate the fact that full-time students can complete their education and training in a year. So contact your nearby educational facility. Your community college is a good place to start. Contact the American Dental Assistance Association at their website, www.dentalassistant.org to link to the American Dental Association for a list of accredited programs in dental assisting. Join a growing profession and then join the ADAA, the people who make dental assisting a profession. to be a dental assistant. You can come in off the street and work in a dental office. You're limited as what you can do legally, but you can work in a dental office. Um, and we still do that. We still hire people from all different areas to come into the dental, assistant, uh, dental office to do different things like front desk work and filing and um, perhaps sterilizing instruments and disinfecting down and doing some um, maybe public relations and things like that. So you can get involved in a dental office without having any licensure, but you're limited. So how do you grow? How do you become more versatile and um, become licensed? Well, there's two ways. There's pathway one, there's pathway two. Pathway one is, and it still exists, and this is how we started out as dental assistants, there was no formal education. So you would work in a dentist office, they would just hire you, you would work, work for them for two years, and then you would be eligible to sit for the boards. Okay, so if you worked in an office full time for two years, minimum, you would be able to sit and take the dental assisting national board. That's how people got, became licensed, until the schools started developing. We are now pulling more away from pathway one, people are going to school because it doesn't take as long, right? That's what you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. It's not as long. Ten months, you can be licensed and start to work. Where if you came in off the street, you have to work there for two years full time to be eligible. So, we, um, our program is a ten month full time program, meaning nine to four, Monday through Friday, September to May, full time. We also have a part-time track, and that is in the evening, 5.30 p.m. to roughly 8.30, any combination of days, Monday through Thursday, not Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, okay? Depending on the semester, depending on the classes, um, the program's identical. Exact courses that are taught during the day are taught at night. In fact, the faculty is exactly the same. Those of us that teach during the day and dental assisting also teach at night. So it's just mirrored, it's the same program. 
18 months for the, for the part-time program, right? It has to be a little bit longer because it is part-time Monday through uh, Thursday. So 18 months for that, but you could work full-time during the day. You could have a family. You could do whatever you have to do during the day. You can work part-time and go to school part-time. So this is for the, uh, the individual that maybe has other responsibilities, financial obligations, family obligations. It's another track to become licensed which is really nice. 10 months is for that individual that wants to come to school full-time, that can come to school full-time, and doesn't have to work but maybe on the weekends doing whatever, waitressing, CVS, uh, whatever jobs, Walgreens, because that's where they come from. That's who I have in my class. 10 months, and you're out, you're licensed. So both are available. Part-time is offered every two years because it's an 18-month program. I can't have two pr part-time programs overlapping. We don't have enough clinic space. So we have the full-time during the day. That starts every June. 18-month program starts every other January, uh, every biennial, biennially, every two years in January, spring semester. So let's talk about that program. Certified dental assistant is a national exam. It's a national certification saying that I took this dental assisting boards, I passed, and I'm qualified to do a litany of things in the dental office, more than just that person coming in off the street, okay? Kind of bumps you one rung up on the ladder. The dental assisting national board consists of three components. A general chair side test, a radiology health and safety test for x-ray, and an infection control exam for sterilization. Once you pass all three of these components, you become a CDA. That's national, so you can move from New Jersey to Delaware to Florida to Colorado to California to Maine, and it's recognized in all of our states in the U.S. That moves you one step up on the ladder. Another license that we have in New Jersey is called the RDA, which is the Registered Dental Assisting License, or the Expanded Function License. This is specific to the state. Every state has their own licensure here. That moves you up another rung. That lets you do things like take impressions on patients, take their arch wires out of their braces and put new arch wires in. Place and remove periodontal pack, which is like a mouth band-aid. Remove sutures. Um, place fluoride. Place sealants. A litany of things that we're allowed to do, and it keeps growing, okay? So, in New Jersey, in this program, my students walk out in May, if they're full-time, CDA, RDA, and if they pass this, which they would if they took this, they have their New Jersey x-ray license because New Jersey recognizes the radiology portion of the boards. So if you pass that, took our program and passed, you automatically get your New Jersey x-ray license. Very attractive, right? Very attractive. I can come in for 10 months, walk out of here completely licensed and educated, and start working. How do we do that? How do, how do we get to do that? What does national board, what does the state say that we as a program have to do to allow you to be licensed? Well, we have to follow something called CODA, Commission on Dental Accreditation. That is a branch of the American Dental Association. Now you've seen ADA all over the place on Listerine bottles approved by the ADA, toothpaste approved by the ADA. That is the organization that sets the standard in dentistry. There's a branch of the ADA called the Commission on Dental Accreditation. And that's strictly a standard for schools to teach dentistry. So all of your dental schools, uh, Rutgers, UMDNJ Dental School, Temple, Penn, they are accredited by CODA. The hygiene schools are accredited by CODA. 
Not all dental assisting schools are. Some are and some aren't. We are. Our program is. Because we're accredited means that we can teach you in 10 months, have you sit for all these boards and walk out of here licensed because we meet all of their standards and their requirements. They're strict, they're tough, it's not a walk in the park. There is no D in the grading scale. There's A, B, C, F. 75 is passing. CODA says that, we don't. Okay, so it's more challenging. However, because we are approved, accredited, we're eligible, or you're eligible, to take those boards at any time. Nice, right? So how does this compare to you and this program? I'm gonna talk as if you're a full-time 10-month program. And in the fall, you have dental radiology course, okay? The whole fall semester, 15 weeks, we teach x-ray, a bunch of other things, but x-ray. So in January, right after the break, you can go ahead and take your x-ray uh, boards, pass it. That doesn't mean you have your license because there's a clinical portion that you have to complete as well. But you can take those boards so it's done. February, you can take your infection control boards because of the education you've had up until that point. So January x-ray, February ice, general chair side can be taken in April at the earliest. So in May, you've got everything. Pretty cool? I love that. Now, a lot of schools are not accredited. And if you go out and you, and you read about the other programs, they may say they're accredited, but you have to ask, are you accredited by CODA? Because that allows you to be here. If they don't have this, you can't have this, okay? Um, in order to be a student here in our program, accreditation states that you have to become a member of our professional association. And that is the American Dental Assisting Association. And it's national. Once you're a member of the national, you're automatically a member of your state component and your local component. Ours being New Jersey, Dental Assisting Association. And then our even smaller group, because we meet every other month, actually, right here on campus, which is fabulous, is Southern Dental Assisting Society. They're all under the national organization. National meets in Chicago, and then every year they have an annual session, and it could be in Texas, it could be in Hawaii, all over the country, which is not as easy for us all to get to. So they say, okay, well, we'll break this up into states. It's almost like the president of the United States, and then you have the senators of the states. You know what I'm saying? So because we're members, we live in Jersey, we're members of Jersey. But if we move to Pennsylvania, you become members of Pennsylvania. It's the same thing. Um, April, our students go to the uh, state association meeting on a Saturday, it's one day, and perform in table clinics and poster contests against other schools who compete. And you also have some uh, professional seminars that you attend. It's a whole day of learning and it's a lot of fun. You meet people from other schools and teachers and students. It's a good time. So. That is required in April that everybody goes on that Saturday. And then you're required once in the program to attend one of your local meetings in the fall and one of your local meetings in the spring, which like I said, they're right here, they're across the hall in this building. So that's really nice and convenient. So that's, that's kind of the nutshell on accreditation. They are setting the standards and we are just following the rules. So now we break it down into this program and it's a rigorous program, I'm not going to lie. It's very fast paced. We are always building from one day to the next. It's not repeated. What you learn today, we build on for tomorrow. So it's a fast pace and you have to keep up on that. We have tons of resources for you to be able to do that. And one resource is that the faculty has made videos of using all different machinery in here and procedures and they're online. 
So you can go home and you can click on them and watch them over and over and over again before you even come to class, which kind of gives you an idea. Um, in any case, you have to be here when class is in session, and we ask that you don't book anything uh, personally if you have an afternoon off, like Tuesday afternoons, there's no classes. I, I ask you, do not plan on scheduling yourself with work on Tuesday afternoons, because you have club meetings. You have club meetings you need to attend. You have remedial work you need to do. Maybe you had been sick a day and you have makeup work. So you need to leave that day or that afternoon for you, even if it's just going home and taking a nap. Don't schedule yourself is my point. Um, we are, oh, let's talk, let's back up. Prerequisites, because I, I believe a lot of you already have these. Um, in order to be eligible to come into the program, you have to have completed English Composition One. You have to have basic psychology and a high school science relatively new within three years, either biology or chemistry. They have to have a lab, either or. If not, then you need to take a college level um, science. Again, chemistry or lab, uh, chemistry or biology with a lab. Also, a 2.5 minimum GPA is required. So oftentimes, students that have maybe been here a semester, they want to start in dental assisting, but their GPA is maybe a 2.5 or something like that. I set them up on the associate's degree track so they can start bringing their GPA up, but yet, follow the track so when they're finished dental assisting, they're, they become an associate, associate's degree as well. What's the difference? When we talk about the 10 and the 18 month program, we're talking about dental assisting courses only, the certificate. We also have an associate's degree tied into our certificate, which makes it wonderful because you're eligible for financial aid, which is it's also opens another door for you. Um, once you finish your CT portion, and if you've had college credit, maybe you need just a couple more courses in the liberal studies, you'll walk out of here with an applied science degree in dental assisting, which is awesome. You know, walk out with an AAS degree and fully licensed. The job status for dental assistants is awesome, and it continues to grow. With the downturn of the economy about four or five, five years ago, um, hygienists were being laid off work. They had their very high overhead. Hygiene, fresh out of school, anywhere from $38 to $45 an hour. Not a lot of dental offices will hire a hygienist full time because then you have to pay benefits and it really increases their overhead. So they'll hire two hygienists to work two part time jobs so they'll have the coverage, but then they just have to pay. Um, the wage, not benefits on top of that because they're part-time employees. So when dentists found that business had slowed down, people have lost their jobs, insurances, so on, they started to let their hygienist go and the dentists were doing their own cleanings. Why not? They had the time. But what they didn't have was enough dental assistant support in their office because there's a lot of behind the scenes that still have to go on. So they start hiring more dental assistants. And that has been the, the trend. It hasn't stopped, it's still growing. I have dentists calling me weekly. Please advertise this for me. I need, I need uh, dental assistance, I don't have any. Couple reasons. One is because of the downturn in the economy that happened and hygienists kind of went on the side, they hired more assistance. Governor Christie stopped adult funding in the technical schools. Programs closed down. There are very few dental assisting schools out there that are accredited. In New Jersey, there's five. New Jersey's a big state. So, jobs are there, I can tell you that. So, <clears throat> coming into the program, you'll have responsibilities besides your academic responsibilities, as far as your English, your science, and your GPA go. Um, you have to have a criminal background check performed on you. You would do that yourself by using an online source that we have. That is used for our affiliate sites when our students go out in clinical rotations. The first half of the semester, you're here in school. 
right here on campus. The second half of the semester, or the second semester in the spring, you're here part-time in class, and part-time you're out in dental offices. Accreditation states that you have to complete 320 hours worth of clinical requirements. So I set you up on that. Every student goes to five different locations, different specialties. So you try general dentistry, orthodontics, periodontics, endodontics, pedodontics. You have a wide variety. Find out what your niche is, what you like. Uh, small practices, one doctor practices, large, 10 doctor practices, uh, clinics, you, you experience all of it. So when you go out to do your supervised clinical in the spring, those sites require that our students have background checks. So I have to tell you that up front. You need to have a background check. Um, the other thing that you need to have, because New Jersey X-ray Board of Radiologic Health says, I have to tell you that you're going to need to sign a moral statement character uh, form that says that you are of good moral character, that you haven't killed anybody, and that you don't, you know, you don't plan to. <laughs> um, it's, that's all it is. I'm a good person, basically, is what it says. I give it to you, you sign it, and I put it in your folder. So I have to tell you that up front. Okay, um, those are the two things that you're required. When you come into class, when you're here on campus, you have to dress a certain way, and our uniforms are scrubs. And pretty much this is what you'll look like, except minus this white jacket, you wear disposable ones because you're in clinic environment, and when we are, I wear my disposable one. But you have a uniform, scrubs, uh, top and pants, and a company, a local uniform company, gives our students fabulous prices. Uh, $11 for the top, $11 for the bottoms. We ask that you buy two pairs for the fall semester. That color is determined by the faculty. You're required to have white shoes on, completely enclosed. Shoes that you can wash down with soap and water like leather or man-made, not canvas or material shoes. All white, no other colors on them. White socks up to your calf, so when you sit down you don't see any leg when your pant goes up a little. As far as hair and jewelry goes, hair is above the collar. So if you have long hair, it's fine. Just tie it up in a bun, throw it up on top of your head, or braid it however you want to. But you can't have a ponytail that's this long flying around. Um, what we are looking for is a sepsis. We don't want hair falling in drawers, hair falling in patients' mouths, in your instruments. Yeah. So we need to keep your hair up. That's, that's the goal here. Our fingernails, no nail polish, no acrylic nails, no gel nails, press on nails. Basically, what God gave you is what you come in with. <laughs> and they're not long, they're to the fingertip. Lots of reasons. Yeah. So, but let me tell you, on break, well, like Christmas break and things, you would just go and have fun. Yeah. Do all the nail thing. And that's the first thing I have on break, I have my appointment. Yeah. Go right in. But uh, lots of reasons why. We use exam gloves, and nails puncture the exam gloves. A lot of bacteria and uh, residual everything hides under the nails. I mean, they're very, it's very dirty. So we don't want to, we don't want to cross-contaminate anything. So we, short fingernails, no nail polish. If you're married, a wedding band. If not, no rings at all. No necklaces, no bracelets, a watch. A watch, a wedding band, and ball post earrings, one in each ear, and that's it. If you have any piercings anywhere else that we can see, you have to cover that, take it out. We don't want to see it. So, you know, eyebrows, tongue, nose, we don't want to see them. Belly button, it's okay. It's fine. We don't see your belly button. Tattoos covered up, either with clothing or a um, Band-Aid or anything like that. Derma, derma something, derma something. There's like a makeup derma something that covers them, I don't know. But in any case, if you're planning on getting a tattoo and coming into the program, just wait until you're out of the program. Okay, and then get like a big tooth on your arm or something. <laughs> um, okay, so that's your dress code. When you go out off campus in the spring, you're going to wear, do the same thing, but you'll have new scrubs. And that'll be, that'll be your clinical scrubs. So you have your campus scrubs and your clinical scrubs. Okay. 
Um, being part of the club, a dental assistant club, we do some community service things. One is we adopt a family for Thanksgiving, we adopt a family for Christmas, we provide them dinner, so all of our canned goods and our box of mashed potatoes and stuff, turkey, we put that all together and we give it to a family. Um, Christmas, we buy presents for the children of that family. And usually, well, I'll tell you what, this year the students have a cart overflowing with gifts for the kids and decided to put together a basket for the mom. And I thought that was really nice, but they put a lot of personal things in there for her. So, and that's what they, you know, it's like, oh, throw this in. If you tell your families, they're like, oh, look here, give them this. Very generous. So, there, that's what we do along with Give Kids a Smile Day. Have you ever heard of that? It's a national free dental, dental service day for children. And that's the first Friday of the month in February. And all the kids, little kids come here and they get their teeth cleaned. We teach them how to brush. And we talk to them about good foods and bad foods and things like that. The Tooth Fairy is here. It's a really good time. We usually have about 60 children, little tiny ones that have never been to the dentist. And they're nervous and they're scared, but then it's a fun event and it's a good experience. So that's a mandatory volunteer day for you. It's a Friday, so that's something we participate in. Um, and then, of course, as a club, you can choose as a group to do anything else you want for the, your community or if you have church group or whatever, you can do that too. Um, hmm. One last thing, and then we um, are going to have a tour, and that is attendance. Attendance is critical, and of course, missed days and latenesses are not tolerated. We are preparing you for health care to go out in that dental office and open up that dental office a half an hour before the patient comes in. So when you, your patient comes in, you'll greet them, you'll welcome them, you'll bring them in, and it's a calm and relaxed environment and everything is open. Um, it's the same idea here. Class starts at nine o'clock, we want you here at 8.45. That's reasonable. Um, if you're absent, of course, there's excused absences. Uh, I was in a car accident. I was sick. I was in the hospital. I don't know, whatever those things are with a doctor's note. Excused absence, not a problem. Um, unexcused absences will reduce your grade one whole level if you have three or more in one class. So that's a hard thing to recover from since you either get an A, B, or C. And if you're a B student and you reduce it because of absences, now you're a C and you're like, oh boy, I hope I make it. So we want to really be careful with latenesses and absences that are unexcused. 